going to bullshit. Maybe probably. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tackle the question that everybody's asking when they first get their mail. Or they're about to buy their mail. Or they just got their mail. And their neighbor realizes they have a mill and they want them to mill some wood. Want them to make some lumber for them. So, and the question is, always ask, and nobody can answer it, except for you. I'll tell you that right up front. You're the only one who can answer this question. You have to answer it for yourself. How much should I charge to mill lumber? And you're the only one who can answer that. Nobody else can answer that question for you. And that's why nobody, either nobody answers these questions um, on social media, or if they do answer them, it's never a quick answer. And it's never to meet your needs. And here's why. Um, how much should I charge the middle lumber? Everybody wants Everybody wants somebody to say, uh, well, you should charge uh, 50 cents a board foot for milled lumber, and you should charge $50 an hour for milled lumber. That's what I charge, and blah, blah, blah. And $25 a broken blade. Everybody will tell you that. But what nobody tells you is you, you've got to figure out what you want to charge for yourself. Are you running a, are you running an LT35? Are you running an LT70? Are you running a, an LT15 push um, mill? Are you running a Norwood? Are you running a, what are you running? I don't know what you're running. Are you running a chainsaw mill? You've got to figure out what you're going to charge yourself. And here's how you do it. South Dakota State University on YouTube has a video out. You go watch that and you sit down for hours and you figure it out. That's how you do it. But after you do that, you've still got to figure in a lot more than they figured in on their video. That's just the place to start. Um, One of the hardest questions to figure out when you first start milling is uh, how much lumber do you mill a, a year? That's one of the first questions you have to figure out. Are you milling uh, a thousand board feet a month? Are you milling a thousand board feet a year? Are you milling five thousand board feet a day? That all has to be figured into paying up your mill. Are you uh, living in uh, Africa? Are you living in California? Or are you living in Missouri? Or are you living in New York? All that has to be figured in. I don't know how much you're paying for fuel in California. I don't know how much you're paying for uh, fuel in Africa. I damn sure don't know that. Um, then, the other reason people can't answer that question is, are you doing this for your neighbor? Your, your neighbor wants a log build up um, because his, he wants to make a... a piece of furniture for his wife out of this special tree in their yard and your neighbor's the your best friend and he does things for you all the time well you probably ought to just go over there and mill up his lumber be a nice guy but are you doing this for a living are you, you want to make a living at it um and I guarantee your neighbor's not gonna, well, I don't guarantee it, but I'm betting your neighbor's not willing to pay for your 
health insurance. And I'm betting he's not willing to pay for your child's college or uh, any of your, your heating bill. I bet your neighbor doesn't pay your heating bill. So do you want to, <laughs> I'll bet your neighbor didn't come over and help you get these damn blades on. <laughs> but do you want to uh, make a living at it? All that's got to go in. The hours you spend, your health insurance, your truck payment. Do you have a truck for your mail? Do you have a tractor for your mail? Do you have a bobcat for your mail? All that's got to go in. To figuring this stuff out. It's all got to be worked into the price of your mill, of your, uh, not your mill, the price of your lumber. So you've got to sit down for hours, maybe days, it took me days, and figure out the cost of everything, the depreciation of everything, the cost of everything, your tractors, your mills, your time, your fuel, your blades, your health insurance, your property taxes. Um, this mill's got to set on the property. I got to pay taxes on this property. Your, the lumber that I mill for somebody to, and stacking an air dry, drying stack, that takes time. You've got to figure that time in there. How much do you want to make an hour? You're living in Africa and you want to make $150 an hour? living in California and want to make two dollars an hour because the cost of living in California is real low and the cost of living in Africa is real high <laughs> okay I hope you know that was sorry. anyway you've got to figure that out what I'm saying is you've got to figure that out for yourself and it takes time nobody has the one answer for you that says you should charge for an LT35 you should charge $75 an hour for an LT15. You should charge $50 an hour for a LT70. For a super saw mill, you should charge $150 an hour. Nobody has those answers for you. If you've been milling for a day, is this your first day? You just got your mill? You probably can't cut as much lumber as somebody who's been doing it for 20 years. So the guy charging seven. See, so you can take an LT15, you can charge $75 an hour because you've been doing it for 20 years. You know exactly how to do it, and there's no question, and you have everything um, prepared. You can get your, whatever I just said, $100 an hour for an LT15 because you can kick out the lumber. The customer's going to be happy to pay it. But you bought your mill yesterday, and you've saw three logs and now your neighbor comes over and says how much to charge to cut one of my logs you can't say $150 an hour well you can but he's not going to be happy when you saw up his one log and it takes you three hours so I don't know how much experience you have I don't know what your mill is I don't know what your cost of gas is I don't know what your health insurance is I don't know how much you want to make an hour I don't even know if you want to make any money an hour. Maybe you don't want to make any money an hour. Maybe you don't just want to pay off your bill. Um, maybe you just want to do it on the weekend for your buddies and you don't want to lose money. You, you've got to figure that out yourself. You've got to figure that out. Sit down. It takes a day, a week, whatever it takes you to figure that out. But go to the uh, South Dakota University, South Dakota State University, maybe, and he's got a couple videos on there, and that will get you started. That's a, that's just a starting point to let you know how to figure out what to charge for milling. The rest of it you've got to figure in yourself because he doesn't, even when he's talking, he doesn't know if you've got 10 years experience or two years, and he doesn't know if you've got a tractor. And he doesn't know what your cost of living is and how much you pay for health insurance. 
And that's only one reason why nobody can answer that question. The other reason, well, that's three or four reasons why nobody can answer that question. But the other reason nobody can answer that question is, is your sawmill, you know, can you look over there, right across the road, and see um, an Amish sawmill? And they can do it for 10 cents a board foot and make money and be happy. I, I can't do it for 10 cents a board foot. I'm not trying to compete with the Amish mill that's across the street from me. Do you, uh, you have, so within 20 miles of you, you got 20 sawmills and you want to compete with them, then your, your price is going to have to be at their price or below, no matter whether you're making money or not. And that's not a way to do it. Do you, are you the only sawmill within 500 miles? You can charge whatever you want. But, so nobody can answer your question on how much should I charge for my sawmill services. You've got to sit down, you've got to figure that out yourself. But don't base your prices on, um, unless you want to be competitive. If you want to be competitive, then figure out what the Amish are selling it for and saw it for two cents cheaper than they are. Figure out what uh, the big box store is charging for their lumber and charge less. If that's if you want to be competitive. I've never, I, I can't be competitive. I can't beat the Amish price and most of the time I can't beat Lowe's prices, at least not for two by fours and two by sixes. You know, when when they were charging $14 for an 8-foot 2x8, I could beat their prices. But my price didn't change. My price per board foot, I sat down and figured it out, and it took me probably longer than it takes most people. But, and I've got that, I've got that set price. It doesn't matter if Lowe's is charging, if Lowe's is charging $2 for an 8-foot 2x4, then my price is my price. Their price is two dollars. If Lowe's is charging fourteen dollars for a two by four, my price is my price, and Lowe's has raised theirs to fourteen dollars. It has what Lowe's does has no effect on what I can sell lumber for. I know what I can sell lumber for. I know what I need to make money. I know what I need to make a living. I know what I need to pay my bills, and that's where my price is set. Although, that being said, uh, the I was going to try to get myself a 3.5% raise this year just because I figured uh, with the amount of experience and the amount of equipment and the amount of um, maybe knowledge, maybe even knowledge that I have, I was going to raise my price this year by 3.5%. And now, the my cost of living, the consumer price index in the United States has risen to risen by 6.2%. So I've got to sit down and figure totally refigure the cost of my lumber. Um, I've got to figure in the new gas prices. I've got to figure in the new um, my new health insurance bills. i got to figure in my new a gallon of milk cost me more to buy. So I've got to raise that by 6.2% just to uh, stay up with the consumer price index. And then you want a 3% raise on top of that, it's, you're at like 10% now. 6.2 and 3.5. Okay, you're at 9.7. <laughs> 10's a lot easier to figure. So you're getting a 10% increase on every piece of board that comes out of here. Every piece of lumber that comes out of here has got to go up by 10%. But you've got to figure that out yourself. I don't know that's why nobody can answer your question on on Facebook or on uh, the forums or on any other platform on the internet because we don't know we don't know where you're at we don't know your mail we don't know your cost of living um, we don't know if you're doing it for a, a job we don't know how much you're paying for health insurance um, we don't know if you got 16 tractors to pay for and 12 chainsaws or you got no chainsaws. 
we we have no idea what equipment you're trying to pay for or even if you're trying to pay for them so does that make the long the quick answer easy <laughs> okay quick answer we'll do it right at the end of the video because everybody else does their quick answers right at the end of the video right make you hear all that bullshit and then give you the quick answer the quick answer is um Cut your lumber for 50 cents a board foot and charge $50 an hour to do it. 400 people are going to say, but I can't make a living at that. And another 400 people are going to say, but that's too much. You can't charge that. You never, you never make, nobody will bring you their lumber. So that's why you can't be answered. You've got to answer that for your area and your needs. Nobody else can answer it for you. Sit down, get your pen and paper out, figure out how much lumber you cut. You can cut in a month, in a year, in a day, and figure out how much it costs you per board feet to do it. You're the only one who can answer that question, and it takes time and work, and you've got to sit down and answer it yourself. Because I can't, I can, I can tell you, okay, Here's the, uh, here's the second quick answer. I can tell you this answer too. Charge $100 an hour for milling and charge 70 cents a board foot. Now people are, now the same 400 people are crying, no, that's too much. And another 400 people are saying, yeah, that's about right. And another 400 people are saying, well, that's not enough. It, do you understand? Um, why nobody can answer your question on how much should I charge. Sit down, figure it out uh, for yourself. It's a hard, it's a hard question to answer. That's it.